Um, we've got a few people still joining us as we go through this. And we're just going to begin by doing some technical checks to make sure that you can hear us OK and hopefully see us as well. So what this can work is um, using little icons that you have access to. So if you're looking at your Click Webinar window, you should see one of the boxes has a list of attendees. And if you then look at the bottom right hand corner of this box, you'll see a little smiley face icon. And if you click on that, you'll get some little icons coming up, which is that you can raise your hand if you want to ask a question or to show us that you agree with the question we're asking you or you disagree or if you want us to speak louder or softer so we can get some feedback from you. So just as this first test, I want to check if you can all hear me okay. So if you can hear me, can you use your little icon and show that you agree? So if you could all now do that, please. Ah, oh, look at that, lovely. Lots of green signs coming up. If you can't hear us, clearly that's a problem to show that you can disagree. So I'm just checking some of the people down at the bottom whether Caroline, Erica, Robin and Roland can hear us. If you're having other problems and you want to let me know, if you can use the chat window. So you'll have a little chat window there and you can type into the very bottom row. So if you're having problems with anything, then you can use that to tell us. So Erica, Lucy and Roland. I'm not getting any input from you as to whether you can hear me okay. So again, if you can use this little icon in the bottom right hand corner of the attendee list, just click on that and show me you agree. That would be great. Otherwise, please tell us in chat if you're having problems. Okay, so most of us look okay. So I'm going to carry on with that. So if you could all please clear your setting. So if you go back to that little icon again, at the bottom it says clear my status. So if you can clear all of those away. Beautiful. That's them all going. So Lucy and Ilyana, I think. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so those have all gone now. And I just want to check if you can see me as well. It's a new technical platform for us. So we're just figuring out um, how it works and if it works. So if you could please use the agree icon if you can see me and Jay, who's sitting here. Um, and I see from the chat that Erica can't hear. She's adjusted the volume her end, but she can't hear above a murmur. Um, and Miranda Simmons is just saying yes, yeah, so I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, I'm just going to type a little message to Erica. And um, yeah, apologies, we know we're going to have to take just a little bit of time to um, orient all of ourselves to this platform before we get underway. So great, so it looks like everyone can see us as well. Erica's still having problems, but I'm talking with her on chat. So if you could all clear your status. Lovely. And the last thing I want to check is whether you can see the, the presentation that's available in one of the windows. And the front page at the moment just says Reconomy Project. We've got a couple of photos. So can I just check that you can all see that OK? And then we're all going to be able to proceed. So lots of pluses coming up. Great. <clears throat> Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much. So I think we're, uh, we're going to be good to go. Um, the other thing just to let you know about, if you can just clear your status, that would be great. The other thing to know is that um, there will be, of course, lots of opportunities for you to ask questions and to actually speak rather than type things into the chat box. 
And in order to do that, what I'll do from here is I just click on your name in my list and I will give you um, also a privilege, which means you'll then be able to, to speak and everybody will be able to hear you. Um, if you've got video on as well, then we can try that. It'd be interesting to see how well that works. It would be nice to, to see you as well as hear you, if that's possible. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a, an experiment. And in order for me to know that you want to speak, then you need to put your hand up using your little icon. But we have um, scheduled some times during the webinar specifically for questions. So if you can hold off until that point, that would be great. If there's something really urgent, you're having problems, you just can't wait, put your hand up or type something into chat to tell us that you want to communicate with us. Um, and I'm glad Erica is going to be able to, to hear us okay, but she has to sit on the floor and hold bits of the computer together so she can hear better. So thank you. Thanks, Erica. I hope you're not too uncomfortable. So I think we're just about ready to, to go. So we should start with some proper introductions now that we know you can hear us and see us okay. So um, I'm Fiona Ward. I've been involved with the Economy Project for, um, well, two or three years now since it got started. And I've been involved in coordinating the overall economic evaluation work. I'm James Haunt, and uh, I've been involved in TransitionTowns.net for about three years and um, involved in what we first called our Business and Livelihoods Group, and now we call Economy Project Totnes. And I was involved in our economic blueprint project. Okay. Thanks, Jay. And I mean, it would be great to get introductions from everybody, but we just don't think we've got time to do that. Um, Jay has distributed a pretty current list of who's attending by email beforehand. So hopefully that gave you some understanding of who's here. And I appreciate we do have some international participants as well. And we'll try and remember to speak um, slowly and clearly so that you can you can all understand it's okay. And if you need us to speak slower, please just use one of your <coughs> icons to let us know. So there was a little bit of preparation we just wanted to mention in advance because that'll make it much easier to understand what we're talking about. And we asked you to do a few things. Um, one of the most important things was to have actually read one of the economic blueprint reports before you came to this call so you have a, a good idea of what we're actually talking about and i'm just wondering how many of you are were actually able to do that and if you were if you can agree on your little icons okay great so we're getting about probably half the group no it's going up all right so most of the group, you can all see there who's responding in terms of having had a chance to look at it. Uh, we're just hearing that Jay's a bit quieter than me, so we'll move in a little bit. That's somewhere. because I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Jay to speak up more, so thanks for the feedback. Great, so, so most of you have a, a good idea of, of what we're talking about, and hopefully it'll, it'll still make sense to those of you who haven't yet had a chance to look at that. Oh, and Joe's just saying he has read it. What's the icon? If you look at the bottom right hand corner of the attendee list box, Joe, you'll see a little smiley face. And if you click on that, you'll get a number of icons that you can use to tell us whether you agree or disagree uh, or you want to um, ask a question or something like that. So I think we're ready to actually get started with it now. Let's go. Well, let's go. So um, I'm going to move on to the first slide, which is really just the agenda. Um, you've seen this in advance, most of you, hopefully. So it's just to say we've, we've just done the technical stuff. And um, we're going to start off, I'm just going to do a little bit of context. And then Jay's going to talk about, well, why do an economic evaluation? What's the point in it? What's the desired outcome? And he'll talk a bit about what the main activities and outputs are of an economic evaluation project. And then we'll open it up to questions and comments from the group. And then Jay's going to go on and talk about the online course, um, what it covers and what's involved. So what's involved in your participation from your end. 
and again we'll open it up for questions and comments. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've learnt needs to be in place in order to successfully do an economic evaluation project. And so we'll go over some of those prerequisites and also talk about what help is available for you to help you get these things in place. And then we'll leave some time at the end for a more general question and comment session and we'll be finishing at 7.30. So let's move on then to um, the next page. Um, can you just clear your status, everybody, just so we're not confused that you want to say something or that you're agreeing with us or disagreeing? So Joe and Erica, if you could clear your status, that would be great. Okay, thank you. So just a, a little bit of, of context, particularly for those of you who aren't so familiar perhaps with the Reconomy project. Um, this is a project of the Transition Network and um, our aim is really to build the capacity of transition initiatives or similar community groups to transform their local economic destiny. So it's a big aim and um, we think underneath that aim there's, there's two questions that our work is trying to address. And the first question is, what kinds of livelihoods and businesses and jobs are needed today, given that we're living in an increasingly carbon-constrained, economically volatile and, and unequal society? And then the second question is, well, how do we actually create the conditions for people and community groups in particular to bring this into reality themselves? And the work we do with the Reconomy Project is to develop processes and, and resources and tools and partnerships that can address these questions. And the economic evaluation process is, is one of the ways that we're doing this. Um, there's a, num a whole number of other things as well we could talk about, but today we're focusing on the economic evaluation work in particular. So that's just to give a little bit of context. And now we will focus just on the economic evaluation bit. I'm going to move on to the next slide, this slide four, which is why do an economic evaluation. So Joe, uh, Joe, Jay is going to talk about this and um, speak loudly, we hope. Okay. Um, well, I guess, uh, I guess there are lots of really good reasons uh, for doing this kind of project. And um, uh, why don't we just uh, go through some of them. Um, one of the uh, real benefits of doing this is that it's a great tool for engaging uh, local leaders in the economy. So these would be um, individuals and organizations within your community that have some kind of an impact on shaping the nature of your local economy. Uh, obviously, um, that's going to include people in local governments. Here in Totnes, we included uh, people from the town council and people from the district council. Um, it's also going to include um, other folks like perhaps the Chamber of Commerce, um, key nonprofits that might be involved uh, in economic issues, um, educational institutions. Um, we included uh, a local secondary school, a local vocational school, and uh, Schumacher College. And uh, it's also going to probably include um, some major employers and businesses. And uh, if you have an opportunity to engage these folks um, on a number of different levels, um, that's really good. This particular project is uh, about speaking their language. So it provides, I think, a great opportunity to um, influence uh, thinking of some of these folks. Uh, one of the other big benefits of doing this kind of a project is that will help you to understand your local economy. Um, we make a lot of assumptions when we're doing uh, our activist work on the ground and community organizing. Um, what this project does is, is um, uh, forces you to actually do some research and focus in on um, uh, some key economic uh, data 
and that will provide a better understanding for you. It will also provide uh, a, a nice evidence base for some of the people that you're engaged with. Along the way, um, it's going to help you identify opportunities for new businesses. Um, in our case, uh, we looked at um, several sectors. We looked at um, food, renewable energy, retrofitting of homes, and health and care. And in each of those sectors, we identified lots of opportunities for new social and sustainable enterprises. So in a way, it's, it's like doing some market research, really. Um, and so in that regard, and um, in some of the other, uh, well, should say, um, one, of the, one of the key benefits of doing this kind of process is that um, it can help you to support the growth of these new enterprises, but also um, more broadly, um, key sectors. So these sectors I mentioned, food, renewable energy, and retrofitting, um, would be important, we think anyway, in um, building in some long-term resilience into your local economy. Um, what we have done here in Totnes with our economic blueprint project is identified activities that we could engage in that would strengthen uh, either new enterprises or existing enterprises uh, in those sectors, things like perhaps a shop local campaign or building networks, that kind of thing. Um, generally, this kind of um, project can help you broaden the reach and impact of your TI. Um, it can help you to build credibility, which is, um, I think, pretty important when you're talking about um, being the nature of your local economy. And this kind of comes back to uh, the idea of engaging your local leaders. Um, we have had um, lots of, of really good outcomes here in Totnes with our process. Um, but I suppose I should say that it's early days. Um, we were one of the first communities to do this process here in England. Um, there have been a couple of other ones. And um, uh, so far, the other communities have had a slightly different experience. Um, and you may have um, yet another kind of experience if you were to do this in your community. Okay, so next slide. I suppose overall, um, the real purpose of doing this kind of thing is to influence the folks that are making decisions about uh, the local economy. So um, this would feed into um, planning and decision making that might be happening at, in your local government or in some of the major employers in your area. And uh, so in that regard, would hopefully lead to um, better decisions that would lead to resilience and um, uh, reduced carbon footprint, things like that. And, and then, um, you know, in that regard, uh, uh, better outcomes on the, on the social level as well. Um, how many of you think that you might be ready to begin a process like this in your own communities? Um, I suppose um, click agree if you think that you are. Okay, a couple of you, three. Oh, the votes are rolling in. Great. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six. So about seven of you think that you might be ready to um, undertake this process. That's really, really exciting. Pardon? Okay, can you reset that, please? <laughs> With Slick, I know. Okay. So, um, right. So you want to you want to do an economic evaluation, or as we called it here in Tottenham, an economic blueprint uh, project. 
what exactly would you be doing? Well, I guess the first step would be um, raising the funds. Uh, I hesitated there for a minute because the first step might also be forming a group. In any case, these are two of the first things that you're going to need to do. So uh, Fiona is going to talk a little bit more about fundraising uh, in a moment, but um, it does take resources to undertake this kind of thing. If you look at the video, um, I think we sent a link to the video and an email um, earlier. Um, we kind of covered some of the resources and some of the, uh, the commitments that you're going to need to make to see this process through. Uh, fundraising is going to be important because you're going to need to pay for people's time to do research and so on. Um, you're also going to have to have a group that's ready to do this work.